Hi, my name is Jim Reinheimer. I am an educational consultant at BLAST Intermediate Unit 17. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today's topic is going to be about equity and including some of the different areas, pillars, and just, um, just to give you a little bit of an introduction and background. And after today, look for another session coming in the near future in which I will uh, go into another area of equity. So, so first of all, some of you are probably wondering, what is equity? Some of you have heard of it, some of you have not heard of it. So what I wanna to do today is just give you an introduction and talk to you a little bit about part of the work that I've helped to work on this past year. And just to kind of give you a little bit of um, my thoughts as well as just to go into a little bit of ways to help you find a little more information um, to, to help you throughout, throughout um, today's presentation and in the future. So here we go, I'm going to share my screen with you. So starting from here, thank you for joining me today as I will be introducing the equity sessions. So essential questions, at this point, I really even just have one. And this is even just starting with today and this, can, this question can um, lead into the next session as well. What is equity and how does it play a significant role in today's educational community, including parents, families, and communities? I'd like to show you, and you may have seen this picture before, and if you have not, just take a look and compare both sides of what you see here at a baseball game. So first of all, when you think about what is known as equality, you think about as far as everything is equal for everyone. But when that happens, as you see in the left-hand side picture, not everyone is able to see over the fence. So unfortunately, there are some that are missing out. So when you now look toward the right-hand side, when we have equity here, if you take a look is that we make a way so that everyone can be part of what is going on here, part of this process. So, so now that everyone can see over the baseball field. So taking a look at here, this is just a little comparison between equality versus equity. So we think about equality, we think about what's sameness, sameness for all. When we talk about equity, we start talking about fairness or justice. And another way to put it simple, here's another example here in the picture here, picking apples, so that we know that we're all not the same height, for example, so not all of us will be able to reach apples to pick. But in some ways, what can we do to help get those apples? The quality, as far as equity means, the quality of being fair and impartial. So what is fair is now what is equitable. Equity will be abstract and ambiguous if it remains to be thought about, but not carried out to be a daily practice. So just in that statement, we can think about it. Okay, well, I think, you know, everyone should, you know, be able to, we could need to make those, uh, what can we do to support for all students? But if we think about it, but do not act out, are we really making a difference? Are we really um, going to be um, performing equity? Are we, is this going to be, um, is this going to be successful or not? So equity has not been achieved in our educational systems. And as I go into this and you start seeing more resources, it will become um, more, I wouldn't say eye-opening for, for many of you. And now you know it has for me, especially in this last year as I've been hearing more about equity and starting to learn a little bit more about it. So the job of any educational system is not to demand the rise of a community, to the standards of the system, but instead to self-examine, start taking a look as far as maybe self-examine for ourselves. Identify what the gaps exist in the provisions of that institution that inhibit a, 
communities rise. So we start taking a look at it, like we could start taking a look, let's say in each school district. What areas are successful? What areas maybe are, you know, doing okay? And what are some areas that maybe we need to maybe start bringing a little more awareness and maybe start to make some improvements so that all students can be successful? And, and I said down here at the bottom, if you see the link here to these quotes comes from our Pennsylvania Department of Education, which I will be showing you later. So Pennsylvania definition of equity is every student has access to the educational resources and rigor they need at the right moment in their education across race, gender, ethnicity, language, disabilities, sexual orientation, family backgrounds, and or family income. So equity actually will tie into each and all of these areas. So I said equity is a very, um, I wanna say at first, and when I heard about it, it's like, it's very abstract to me. There was a lot of different areas we can go into as far as equity. So just today, I'm just beginning to take that first step with you to, to even just skim the surface. So, so now the Pennsylvania Department of Education. So according to PDE, they have also expressed. So in order for students to do their best, they must feel safe at school. And meaning what is to be safe at school? That can include a healthy and safe environment so that can help students thrive. And every student, regardless of race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, gender identity, or expression should be provided the opportunity to learn free from discrimination, fear, or harassment. A little more of an explanation is there on that website as well. So no matter where our students are coming from, they need to feel safe. So in order they will do their best, they need to feel safe. We need to continue to care for our students and to always make those great connections and help make them feel safe. So the Equitable Practices Hub. The purpose is to establish a coherent collection of resources for the educational community they may use in providing intentional equity in their communities. So these resources have been handpicked, reviewed, and they represent best practices, models and guidance from all of their component parts. They are divided into following pillars or topics, which I will be going through with you. I was lucky and fortunate enough in this last year to serve on one of these hubs, which I got to serve on the family engagement uh, community as like well with the parents hub. So working with um, a few other representatives, consultants from other IUs, we were able to start finding some other resources. And um, my other uh, friend, Jeff Pelly, um, has also um, been a wonderful addition to this process as well that both of us have been able to continue to work on this team together in the last year. So finding those resources, it's definitely uh, has been very helpful and I look forward to continue to share this with you. So getting into the pillars right now. So the first one is what's known as general equity practices. And there's always a question that's involved for each of the six here, which includes how can our educational community consider global equitable practices in our specific context? Number two is self-awareness. What is the role of educators, staff, and more broadly, you, as far as our audience, for all of you who was watching today, for all of you who are teachers, staff, administration, thinking about families, um, what's shaping the educational community towards greater equity? For the next one, we look at data practices. So how might our educational community use our own specific data in order to drive equity efforts within our own community? Number four 
um, parent family community engagement. I also like to tie this in as far as with parents as well. When I think about families, I think about the community. So this was the one that I was part of, as well as my other um, uh, friend, um, Jeff Pelly here at IU 17. So what is the role of the educational community beyond the school in driving educational equity efforts? We also look at academic equity. Looking through this would be how might we teach, practice, and enforce shape educational equity? How are we providing academic access and opportunity? So what are we doing for our students? And then number six, disciplinary equity. Does our system of discipline reflect equity among all student subgroups? So how do we find more information on equity? So right now, taking the first steps, what I would like to do right, right now with you is just to click on this, click on this website. And in fact, you can even after today's session, you can go back and you can begin to navigate uh, through all of what here the um, PDE has to offer. So if I click on here right now, as I continue to share my screen, the first thing you will do is you see here at the top here, you would scroll down, okay? So you would scroll all the way down here to you see in the middle here, you would see resource collection, equitable practices hub. On here, what I will do now is I will click on this link. And by clicking on this link, here we go. We have equitable practices hub. So again, some of this I went through with you already, a little more of an explanation here. We go into the pillars, which I just went through with you as far as these questions. Now we look at the spheres. And when we look at the spheres, we look at far as districts and schools, um, they may be asking the following questions. In what way can the school district or an individual school become more equitable across their systems? For classrooms, what can teachers do in manners of curriculum, discipline, pedagogy, and classroom culture in order to become better proponents of equity? Individuals, what can an individual be it a teacher, administrator, a student service professional, caregivers, students, uh, what can they do to promote equity in their educational community? Before we begin, as far as schools, they may want to take a look at here as far as assessing what's known as the Admitted Atlantic Equity Concert, uh, Consortium. And if you just click on here, which, which I'm doing right now, this is what it will look like. And there's like a lot of questions that you can answer what it would look like and going through the policies, criteria, questions. So that was just one example right there. I'm going to get back here. So then once completed by a core district or school team, our next link here is what is the companion action planning guide. And by clicking on here, it basically will have here as far as the pillars of practice, it will go through where as far as maybe doing an equity audit, looking and seeing what action guides needs assessment. And as far as maybe like where we would need to make our media focus of priorities. And then maybe looking at next year, identify two to three areas or sections, uh, predict maybe, um, maybe like what you would like to see improved. And as we continue to explore, um, one of our point of contacts is Dr. Nicole Holland Sims. She has a lot of great resources. We've worked with her throughout this, and this is going to continue to, we will be continuing to find resources throughout the upcoming months and years. So take a look at here, there will be more that will be added. We can go into as I went through here with you with each of the questions. So for my next session, in fact, I want to uh, touch more upon the family community engagement. So for right now, like, let's just take a quick look at this one here. So when I, when I click on family and community engagement, I can just scroll down and I can see school district, classroom, individual. And then like, let's say if I want to click on, oh, you know what, let's just click on the, on the classroom right now. So if I click on classroom, again, I would scroll down and then what we would do here is we start looking at the different standards, which I will be going through with you in our next section. 
um, next session. So there's six different standards here that um, our team was working on this past year. And even like through this, and I'll go into more detail with there are a variety of resources that we will use that may be helpful for you. If I click back here again, so this is just touching just upon just the very beginning stages here. So right now I'm going to, I'm going to go back here. And again, I just asked these questions looking at the spheres. So we were going through those six, six of those pillars. And then we look as far as breaking it down. We look at districts and schools, classrooms, individuals, and then like breaking it down as far as we think about so parent, family, community engagement. So um, introduction. So under this pillar, so like I start thinking about this, these are some questions maybe we can start thinking about for our next, next session. What is the role of the educational community beyond the school in driving educational equity? That was mentioned, I mentioned to you before. How does this involve the relationships between school, the families, and the community? So how much outreach is there? How much equity are we using with our families? So I know like if, if schools, are they trying to work on these areas? Is this a work in progress? Is this been successful? So like these are some of the questions that schools uh, may be asking. So just a couple of final thoughts here. Um, equity, um, we think about equity you know, like some of the quotes that's been said, and this even came from uh, PDE, you know, okay, this is just a new buzzword, it's overplayed. We think about, um, we aren't doing enough um, equity, we're already focused on trauma, mental health. Um, equity does not uh, apply to me. We live in a rural area and a rural district and we don't have any racial diversity. And we think about, okay, well, maybe I can tie equity into a quick 30 minute session and, and they'll know everything. So it's so much more than that, so much more than that. Um, equitable practices, um, as we take a look here, they are for all students. Equity is not a program or a curriculum specific to a subgroup. So systematic approaches to equity follow the um, M um, MTSS, multi-tiered system support, which focuses on academics, behavior, social, emotional outcomes, thinking about um, keeping our students safe, the well-being of our students. Uh, we will look and dig deeper into the parent, family, community engagements pillars for our next session. So um, just, just a couple of other final thoughts. Um, I would love to see you, I would love if you were able to continue to watch these series with me. And if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to um, send me an email. My email address is jreinheimer at iu17.org. And as well as you can also take a look at the PDE website. So just taking a look right here, I'm just thinking about, let's take this first step together. Today was an introduction, uh, just putting down, let's say that first brick, if we're building a house maybe just taking that first step of a run. Okay, so my question for you is, will you join me on the equity journey? Here are some additional resources. Um, all of these, um, you can look on the Pennsylvania Department of Education as I went through with you before, if I scroll down. You can also find more information on the patent website. A lot of it comes from the PDE website, as well as the other website I shared here with you with the Okay. Again, thank you so much. I really want to thank you for joining me today. And